they were having a busy summer in Greendale, Alf Thompson was getting the hay in. He could just about manage to squeeze between the houses with his load. But then he wasn't counting on something of a traffic jam in the middle of the village. Pat had left his van outside the post office and someone had left a lorry on the other side of the road. It's a job getting through. Steady does it. How's it doing on the other side? Oh dear, oh dear. Oops. I'll have to back up. Right, here we go again. It looks as though Alf is stuck. I wonder who the lorry belongs to. Phew. A right mess I've got myself into. That sounds like Miss Hubbard. She'll soon sort things out. Stop! You'll have to stop, Miss Hubbard. Oh, what's this, Alf? How am I to get through if you block the road with your tractor? I'm stuck, Miss Hubbard. Between Pat's van and this lorry. Well, we can't wait here all day. Where is Pat? Pat? What's to do? said Mrs Goggins. Don't take on now. Pat'll be back in a minute when he's done the village letters. It's this lorry, said Miss Hubbard. Who's left it here? There's no sign of a driver. What's going on? said Peter Fogg. Has there been a crash? There will be, if this lorry isn't moved, said Miss Hubbard. It looks like a builder's lorry. What's it doing in the village? Does that mean we'll have to wait around? I certainly hope not. Pat should be back soon. We need P.C. Selby. Here is P.C. Selby. Now then, now then. What's all this? What's going on? You can't block the road like this, you know. Alf Thompson's stuck. It's not my fault, it's this lorry. And Pat's van. They all talked at once. Right, what a mix-up. Wait a minute, here. wait a minute. Now then. Here, this headlight's broken. Now then, let's get things sorted out. Who does this lorry belong to? Pat was hurrying round the village with his letters. Pat! Who's that calling? Oh, it's Sarah, Pat's wife. Must be your forgetting day, Pat. You went off without your sandwiches. Here we are. Special delivery. Just like a parcel, said Pat. I'd better not pop them in somebody's letterbox by mistake. <laughs> You'll be hungry if you do. Bye. Bye, and thanks. Left a bit. They Go still on. hadn't sorted now, the traffic to your jam. Right. Stop. Left again. Now, a little to your right. Straight now. Straight. Stop. That's it. All over now. Left, he says, then right. Wish he'd make up his mind. Keep to your right. Back up a little. No, back again. Come straight on. You'll never get through there, you know. Alf, stop! Oh, over to the left! Mind the Come van! On, Alf. Oh, dear! Stop! Back up a little! Then hard down on your left! Stop! You'll have to go back again! Now, hard over to your left! No! Ho, ho! What have we here? You can't leave the place five minutes and look at it. Back a little! Now, now hard over to your... Oops! Mind the van! No, no, right! Right, I You've got me all of a muzzle. I'm staying put till somebody moves that lorry. Hang on, said Ted. I'll give you a hand. Ted's lorry? So sorry, everyone, said Major Forbes. Ted's just giving me a hand at the hall. Borrowed the lorry. First traffic jam in Greendale, what? Soon be off. Morning, everybody. Just a word, Pat. 
urgent parcel coming from London. Bought these tin soldiers for my collection. Now take good care of it, there's a good chap, what? Don't you worry, Major, said Pat. I'll see you get it safe and sound, the way you always do. Good man. Bye for now. Bye. You see, PC Selby, it's quite easy when you know how. At last, Alf could get on his way. Miss Hubbard decided she had wasted enough time and moved off, whilst Peter Fogg started up his motorbike again, leaving PC Selby and Jess with the road to themselves. Pat was helping Mrs Goggins to sort the rest of the letters and parcels. There were two parcels with no address. Mrs Goggins found a label that had come unstuck. Oh, it's this modern glue, said Mrs Goggins. They're forever dropping off. Now, which one shall I put it on? I think it's off that one, said Pat. But that leaves one without an address, said Mrs Goggins. Don't worry, said Pat. As soon as somebody says, where's my parcel, I'll know it must be theirs. Simple. Oh, I'd never have thought of that. Goodbye, Pat. Mind how you go. Bye. Now then, Jess, we'd better take the Major's parcel first. It's something special. Toy soldiers. Pat was on his way. Pat arrives at Garner Hall. Won't be long, Jess. Looks as though the Major's busy. I could have sworn the bell was working. Whoops. Uh, anybody in? Hello? Major? Major Forbes? Uh, anyone at home? I'll leave the parcel here. It'll be quite safe. What's that? <laughs> Must be me imagining things. Where is everybody? They must be having a tea break. Pat was on his way. That's just the place for a quiet picnic, Jess. Under that tree. Under that tree will do nicely. Whew, that was a warm climb, but it was worth it. Now, let's see. Tuck in, Jess. There's nothing like a quiet picnic. This is a funny sandwich. 
Oh, no. It's the Major's toy soldiers. How did they get into my lunch? Oh, what a noodle I am. I've got the wrong parcel. I must have left my sandwiches on the hall table in the Major's house. It was this parcel that the address fell off. Come on, Jess. Back to the Major's. He'll be thinking his soldiers have run away. Down at Garner Hall, the Reverend Timms was trying to cheer the Major up, and PC Selby was looking for footprints. Anything the matter? asked Pat. What's going on? Robbery, said the Major. That's what's going on, Pat. My collection of soldiers, gone, all gone, what? Marched off without a sound. But there's a funny thing. The robbers left their sandwiches behind. Oh, no, said Pat. They were my sandwiches. You see, I muddled the parcels up. My sandwiches and your soldiers. I left my sandwiches on your hall table and your parcel of soldiers was still in my bag. And here it is. Pat, you're a genius, said the Major. You've saved my new soldiers from the robbers. What? The best of the bunch, too. Good man. But I'm still hungry, said Pat. The Lord will provide, said the Reverend Timms. I'll just pop in for my sandwiches. Now then, Pat, said P.C. Selby, I'll have to ask you for a statement. You can't go in there, Pat. Not till we've looked for fingerprints. But I want my sandwiches, said Pat. Those sandwiches are evidence, said P.C. Selby. Evidence, Pat, that's what they are. Nobody can touch them, not till the CID get here from Pencaster. And goodness knows when that'll be. I wonder if Sarah's got something nice for lunch, said Pat. I'm so hungry, Jess. I think we'll have to pop home and see. Bye. Bye, old chap. Bye, Pat. Home sweet home. Hello, anyone at home? It's me. Oh, you've never lost your sandwiches after all, have you? Said Sarah. Not lost, said Pat, but they're evidence now. Oh, well, I never. And Pat had to tell her the whole story of the robbery at Garner Hall. Jess was too busy to listen. I'll have to be on my way, said Pat. There are still lots of letters to be delivered. Mmm. Robbery or no robbery. Now you'll be passing the school just about the right time to pick young Julian up, said Sarah. Save me a trip. All right. I'll not forget. Bye for now. Come on, Jess. We haven't finished yet. In you get. Pat was on his way again. What's happened to Peter Fulm? Hello, Pat. Having trouble? I certainly am. My front wheel brakes have locked. Nearly threw me over the handlebars. I'll ask Ted Glenn to pop along with his toolkit. Here's something to read while you're waiting. Oh, good. It's my motorbike magazine. Great. Bye, Pat, and thanks. Pat called at Thompson Ground. 
Alf was helping Ted load some wood onto the lorry. Hello, Pat. Pat had some letters for Alf. Come and have a cuppa, said Alf. Dorothy's sure to have the kettle on. He was right. Just the job. Hello, Pat. What's all this about a robbery at the hall? said Alf. Pat had to tell the whole story again from the beginning. Oh, said Pat, I nearly forgot with all this talk about the robbery. Peter Fogg's stuck with his motorbike. He's broken down, about two miles back. Do you think you could give him a hand, Ted? No trouble. I'll pick him up when we've got this wood loaded. Thanks for the tea, said Pat. Goodbye. Bye, Pat. Bye. Pat's next stop was at Intake Farm. He met PC Selby coming out. Any news of the robbery? asked Pat. Good news and bad news, said PC Selby. They caught the robbers on the road to Pencaster, but there's no sign of the collection of toy soldiers. Bye for now. Cheerio, Pat. There was a newspaper for George Lancaster. Pat set out to find him. But where had he got to? Looking for me, Pat. Ooh, you made me jump, George. I thought the robbers were after me. Here's your Hen Farmer's Weekly. Oh, thanks, Pat. Then George told Pat how he dreamt he was being chased by a giant hen, which flew away just before he woke up. It's time I was flying away, said Pat. I'm supposed to be collecting young Julian from school. Now where has that cat got to? He might be after rabbits down the field, said George. He likes my rabbits, does your Jess? They went to look. Jess! 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 He sometimes comes round here. No sign of him, though. Jess! Jess! Pat found Jess with his rear end sticking out of a rabbit hole. Here he is, George. I think he's got himself stuck. Pat took hold of his cat as gently as possible and pulled. Something small and heavy rolled into the grass. George picked it up and looked at it. What's Jess found? said Pat. Looks like one of these old tin soldiers, said George. I used to have a box full when I was a lad. Could do with a bit of a clean. Did you say a tin soldier? said Pat. Yes, why? The robbery. You must have heard. Hang on. Pat thrust his arm down the rabbit hole as far as it would go and brought out a shopping bag. He looked inside and found it full of toy soldiers. Jess has found the loot, said Pat. The robbers must have hidden them on their way to Pencaster. They must have passed your gate. Clever cut, said George. I must get these back to the Major, said Pat. He will be pleased. Keep an eye on these, Jess. Bye, Pat. Bye. Never mind, Jess. The Major will be so pleased to have his soldiers back. I'm sure he'll give you something nice. Pat remembered to pick Julian up from school.
Am I late? Huh, not much, Dad. On the way, he told Julian all about the robbery and how Jess had found the soldiers down a rabbit hole. Garner Hall at last. Ted and the Major were still busy with the roof. What's a fellow doing here again, eh, what? Special delivery, Major. What? In a scruffy plastic bag? Bless my eyes, it's my soldiers! My precious soldiers! Thank you, Pat, you're a stout fellow. And Pat told the whole story yet again. But it was Jess that found them, said Julian. Wasn't it? It's a good place to hide something said Ted, down a rabbit hole. Now, who'd think of looking there? We'd better be off home, said Pat. Sarah will think we've got lost. Take this with you, said Ted, and make sure you look at page two. Er, uh, thanks, Ted. I will. I don't know why Ted wants me to read the paper, said Pat. Bye. Bye, Pat, and thanks again. Julian couldn't wait to see what it was. Oh, it's about a reward. For anyone who finds the Major Soldiers, 500 pounds. Well, I never, said Pat. That'd buy a lot of fish for Jess. It's time to go home and tell Sarah all our news. Let me tell her first. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. What's that you're making, Julian? It's a kite. For the kite festival later. What do you think of it? He, it's a real smasher. Do you know, I used to love flying a kite. Why don't you come, Dad? It'll be great. <laughs> Sorry, Julian. I can't. I've got a busy day. No time for flying kites. It doesn't look much like kite flying weather. There's not a breath of wind out there. Well, wind or no wind, the post won't deliver itself. I'd best be off. OK. Goodbye, Pat. Cheerio, Sarah. Bye, Julian. Come on, Jess. Time for work. Yeah. Oh, Jess! Mum, look what he's done. It's ruined now. Never mind, love. There's still enough time to make a new kite. Hmm. Perhaps Charlie can help. <laughs> Whoa! That was close, Jess. That wind's really picking up. Oh, morning, Pat. Morning, Mrs Goggins. What a funny day this is. The weather doesn't seem to know what to do. Well, I hope it stays fine. Ajay's done a lot of work organising this kite festival. Um, I'm a judge, you know. <laughs> I'm sure you'll do a grand job, Mrs Goggins. Oh, <laughs> Pat. Hundred and twenty-five wide. Charlie, what are you doing? I'm working out the aerodynamics. Oh, I see. Well, mine's a special Pencaster United kite. Look. Hmm. Hello, Ajay. Hello. Thought I'd better give her a polish. I've been neglecting her while I've been busy with the festival. Dad! Dad! I've finished my kite! Oh! What's that noise? Are you whistling, Dad? No, it's not me, Mira. <laughs> Nor me. Well, where's it coming from, then? Listen. Listen. 
<laughs> a singing steam engine. Who would have thought it? I didn't know the wind could make things sing. Aye, it's just like blowing across the top of a bottle. The wind can make all sorts of sounds. And when you get that pretty kite up into the air, you'll see what else it can do. Hmm. Maybe my kite could sing too. Here you are, Ajay. Thanks, Pat. Perfect weather for the kite festival, hey? Thank goodness that wind picked up. Aye. <laughs> Cheerio. This kite should be perfectly aerodynamic. You see, when the wind comes up like this, the angle and the wind speed should push it up even higher. Um, and then, uh, and then when... Shall we give it a go, then? Oh, yeah, OK. Looks like we've got a parcel for Ted. <laughs> I wonder what he's been ordering this time. Meow. Just the man I've been waiting for. Here, I'll give you a hand. My, you have been busy, Ted. That's a grand kite. Aye, and this parcel will be the final touch. That's the best tail I've ever seen. Aye, oh, she's a beauty, all right. Whoa! Oh, no! Don't worry, Pat. We'll catch it. to go. Get it, Ted. Phew. Almost lost it that time. Thanks for helping me catch it, Ted. No problem. Jess, where are you? Boy, heck, it works. <coughs> Quick, Ted. Follow that kite. <coughs> ah, I don't... don't think this one is... is going to work. Of course it will. You just have to run faster. OK. Let go! Now! Oh. Wow, look! It can do tricks! Oh, maybe not. Heading for the church. Oh no, not the weather vane. Ooh. That was a close call. 
By Gumi's off again. Okay. So what we need is a kite that looks good, can do tricks and stay up in the air. How do we find a kite like that? Um, maybe we could join our kites together. Brilliant! <laughs> Get it, Ted. Oh, my heck. Don't worry, Jess. We'll catch you. Hello, and welcome to Greendale's very first kite festival. We've got some brilliant kites here, so best of luck and happy flying, everyone. Hooray! Yay! Definitely. Oh, no. Where did he go? Oh, dear. We'll never find him amongst all these. What a turnout, Mrs Goggins. This is very impressive. It is indeed. Oh, my word! Look at that one. It's beautiful. Ooh! Ah! Oh. Excellent. That kite looks a bit like... It can't be! Jess! Hold on tight. <gasps> oh, no! Poor Jess! Quick! Somebody do something! Watch out, Jess! Oh, no! Poor Jess! What can we do, Dad? Uh, hmm. I know. Can you do more kite tricks like that? I, I think so. Then I think we might be able to bring Jess back down to Earth. Can you make more loop the loops? OK. Come on, Charlie. <laughs> Come on, Come on Charlie. 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 You can do it. Oh, good show. Okay, everyone. Take the strain. Ready? One, two, three, pull. One, two, three, pull. One. Three, four. Oh, welcome back, Jess. Yay! Yay! Oh, well done, well done. Hello again. Thank you, everyone, for coming along to Greendale's first kite festival. All the kites have been fantastic. And I'm sure you can't wait to see who has won one of these wonderful prizes. So, without further ado, let me hand you over to our judges, Reverend Timms and Mrs Coggins. Thank you, Ajay. The prize for the prettiest and most musical kite is awarded to... Mira. for the kite with the best flying skills. And it's awarded to... Charlie and Julian. Oh! Yay! Yay! And our final special prize goes to the bravest kite flyer, Jess. Yay! Ha <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I think Jess will be keeping his feet firmly on the ground from now on. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. There we are, the 10.30 collection, bang on time. What a grand day, Jess. There's nothing like a nice, peaceful day in the country. Hiya, Pat! Good morning, Ajay. Goodness me, Ajay can certainly move on that motorbike of his. <laughs> Imagine how quickly I'd get my round done if I went like that. Meow. Glad I caught you, Alf. Your seed catalogue's arrived. Champion! Just in time, too. There's some winter wheat I'm thinking of ordering. I was just saying to Jess what a lovely, peaceful day it is. Morning, Pat. Morning, Alf. Hi, Ted. Ted. By gum, Ted certainly tears around in that lorry of his. Blink and you'd miss him. <laughs> Ted's a busy man. A lorry might be fast, Pat. But not half as good as my old tractor. Up hill or through, more the tractor will never let you down. Oh, I've been meaning to do something about that. Now you mention it, Alf. I wouldn't swap my trusty old post van for anything. Hmm. Wait a minute. I've just had an idea. Why don't we have a race around the village? Then we'd see whose vehicle was the best. What do you say, Alf? Count me in, Pat. And so we're going to have a race. Julian says Ajay is sure to win on his motorbike. But, Pat, being a good driver is more than just going fast. Drivers have to use their heads as well as their accelerators. Meow. Mm, that's very true. So why didn't you have some tests along the way to find out who knows the rules of the road? That's a great idea. I'll get all the children to help. We'll invent questions and the drivers will have to stop and answer them along the way. Then we'll see who really is the best driver. Hey, this is going to be quite an event. Ladies, gentlemen and children, welcome to the Great Greendale Race. Our contestants are Alf Thompson, Hooray! Pat and Jess, Ajay Baines, Ted Glenn, See Selby. I hope my dad wins. And that, he doesn't stand a chance against my dad's motorbike. Ready, set, go! And they're off. Ajay takes an early lead with Alf close behind him. Then comes Pat and, oh dear, where's PC Selby? One should never ride a vehicle unless it's in a roadworthy condition. Oh, Dad, hurry! Come on, Al. How are we supposed to catch up with Adji when we can't get past your tractor? Sorry, Ted. There's no I can do about it. There. Now I'm ready to proceed. See you later, Lucy. Go, Dad, go! And PC Selby joins the race. Yeah. Yes, it looks like Edgy is already at the first test stop. Oh, well done, Ajay. You're in the lead. Now, for this test, the children have made up some road signs. You have to tell us what they mean. What's this one, Ajay? Ah, now, I know all these. That one means keep left. That looks like tunnel ahead. What about the one with the car? I made that. You've done a champion job. How long did that take you? Now then, Ajay, if you chatter with my bill, you lose all your lead in the race. Oh, dear. So I will. Sorry, Bill. That sign of yours means slippery road. And the last one means look out for the falling rocks. Well done, Ajay. 
Here come the others. See you later. supposed to be a signpost showing us the way. Hmm. Ah, I think we'd better take this road, Alf. Nay, nee, I think that's wrong. I'm going this way. to nothing but a rubbish dump. <laughs> I ended up at a lake. I think we both took the wrong turning. Hmm. Well, it has to be this road, then. Come on, Alf, there's no time to lose. What's happening, Mr Pringle? What can you see? Well, Adji is in the lead. Uh, oh! oh! Sorry, Adji is in the lead. I've just spotted him up on Garner Bridge. My dad's in the lead. Then it's Ted with Pat and Alf close behind. You left out my dad. Ah, there he is, Lucy, just coming up the first test. My dad's last. Come on, Mr Glenn. We're waiting to give you the second test. Hello, you two. How am I doing? Second place. Now, this is the test, Mr Glenn. We are traffic lights. <laughs> you look more like the twins to me. We're playing at traffic lights. When we hold up a coloured bar, you have to say what that colour means on a traffic light. <laughs> now, this is a good game. Go on, then. Green. Green means go. Red. Red means stop. Orange? Oh, now, that still means stop, Katie, but you can expect the lights to change any minute. Hooray! You got it right, Mr Glenn. Here, let me have a look at those balls. I used to be a bit of a juggler, you know. Watch this. Hey, how's that then? Look at that. Whoopee, there we go. <laughs> I've still got the old magic, you know. Oops! I've lost one of the traffic lights in that old bramble bush. Hang on, I'll get it back in a jiffy. Ouch! <laughs> now then, what's going on here, Ted? I pricked me thumb on that bramble bush. Very tricky characters, bramble bushes. Approach with caution. If you take your test now, PC Selby, you won't be last anymore. Never mind me, I'll be ready to carry on the race when I've got these prickles out. Well then, let's have it. Well, I seem to have left Pat behind somewhere. So I must be doing well. <laughs> Not bad for an old tractor. Oh dear, Daisy. Got lost, have you? We can't have you wandering all over the road, can we? Come on, I'd better get you back in your field. Shoo, 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 come on. This way. Ooh, come on, shoo. Oh! Hello, Alf. What's going on? I'm just putting these sheep back where they belong. Somebody left the gate open by mistake. Never mind me, Pat. You go on and try and catch Ajay. Right, oh, Alf. See you later. Bye, Pat. Yeah. And the exciting news is that Pat has now moved up into second place. I can just see his van winding its way down by Intake Farm. Hooray! Come on, Pat. Come on, Dad. You can do it. Hello, 
Dr. Gilbertson. I expect you've got a test for me. Yes, Pat. A driver must have good eyesight. Now, Sarah has painted a picture for you to look at, and you must tell her what it is. Oh, sounds easy to me. Except that I'm all the way over here. Uh, mm, yes, well, uh, uh, it looks a bit like a, a teddy bear. No, uh, it might be a dog, I suppose. Look hard, Pat. Hmm. <coughs> All right, Jess. I'll get it in a minute. Uh, hang on. It's Jess! Well done, Pat! Lovely picture, Sarah. Can we put it up in the post office when this is over? Course you can, Pat! Come on, Jess. No time to lose. Good luck, Pat. Bye! Now, don't get too excited, Jess. AJ is probably miles ahead of us by now on that super motorbike of his. <coughs> Hold on a minute. What's this? Oh! <sighs> Ajay, what's up? I've run out of petrol. Oh, dear. I should have filled her up before the race, but I thought I had enough. We're near the winning line now, you know. Oh, yes, I know. Go on, Pat. Round that corner and you won the race. Do you know what? I reckon I've got a can of petrol in the back of my van. Have you? It's in there somewhere. I'll, uh, I'll take a look. But, Pat, the race! I'll have you up and running in a jiffy. Now then, where's that can? Oh, dear. It's B.C. Right. Selby! Afternoon, all. What's happening here, Pat? Ajay's run out of fuel. And Pat's stopped to help me. Don't worry about us, Arthur. You carry on. If you're sure, Pat, I'll be on my way. will present the first Greendale Cup to the winner. Come on up, B.C. Selby. Yay! Congratulations. I'm delighted that old-fashioned pedal power has won the day. Thank you, Reverend. Most honoured. And now, a special prize for Pat. Oh, for stopping to help Ajay and losing the chance of winning the race, here's one of Mrs. Pottage's famous homemade apple pies. Oh, that's very nice. Thank you. Well done, Pat. Thank you very much. Now, anyone for apple pie? Yes, please. And can you make sure you come last next year, Dad? <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Pat. Thanks, Mrs. Coggins. Wake up, Jess. Time for work. Oh, he's a sleepy boy this morning. Off we go, Jess. See you later, Mrs. Coggins. Bye, Pat. It's the school choir, Jess. Morning, Pat. Morning, Dr Gilbertson. The children are in good voice today. Pity the Pottage twins won't be there to join in. Or Katie and Tom poorly, then. They've both got a nasty bout of chicken pox. Poor things. Let's hope nobody else gets it.
Hi, Jess. Hi, Dad. Morning, everybody. I could hear your choir singing from down in the village, Mr Pringle. Thanks, Pat. They've all been working very hard, learning our new song. <gasps> Mr Pringle, Mr Pringle! Lucy's covered in spots! Uh, spots? <gasps> Mr Pringle, Mr Pringle! So is Bill Thompson! Huh? It looks like a case of Black River Fever to me. <gasps> <laughs> of course it's not Black River Fever, Sarah. It's probably chickenpox. Dr Gilbertson just told me that Tom and Katie Pottage have got it. Chickenpox is highly contagious. I think I should send the children home immediately. Hooray! I'll phone your parents and tell them to collect you right away. Morning, Mrs Goggins. Morning, Pat. Oh, thank goodness you haven't caught chicken pox. It's all over the village. Really? Oh, aye. The poor vicar's got it, and Jeff, and Charlie Pringle, and so has little Lucy Selby. Yes, Julian's come down with it now. He was pretty miserable when I left this morning. He said his chicken pox spots were itchy. Oh, that reminds me. Ajay's just phoned to say that the calamine lotion has arrived from Pencaster. Could you pick it up and drop it off at Dr Gilbertson's, please? Certainly, Mrs Goggins. It's very good for itchy spots. <laughs> Everybody in Greendale will be wanting a bottle. Come on, Jess. Looks like we've got lots to do today. <laughs> Oh, there you go, Pat. That'll be the last of the Calamine lotion. Thanks, Ajay. Could you let Dr Gilbertson know that Mayor has got chicken pox? <laughs> her spot's itchy too. Yes, and she's got a bad cold. Tell her we said get well soon. Meow. I will. Bye, Pat. Meow. Bye, Jess. Bye, Ajay. Meow. Oh, dear, Sarah. You've got it as well. Morning, Pat. Yes, she woke up this morning covered in spots. <sighs> Poor you. Here's the calamine lotion you ordered, Dr Gilbertson. Oh, thanks, Pat. I should deliver them right away, but I really need to keep an eye on Sarah. Would you mind dropping them off for me? No problem, Doctor. Ah, the vicar will need a bottle, and Jeff Pringle and Charlie. Oh, and Bill Thompson, too. And Mira. Ajay says she's very itchy. Oh, dear. Yes, she'd better have one. Could you also take a packet of salt to the vicar for me? No problem. The vicar's my next call. Why does the vicar want salt? To gargle with. Gargle? With salt? You mix it with water. It's very good for sore throats. Can you gargle, Sarah? I'm a brilliant gargler. <laughs> Goodness me. But you have to be careful not to swallow it or you'll be sick. That's enough, Sarah. Thanks, Pat. Tell everybody to rub calabide lotion onto their spots and gargle with salt water if they've got a sore throat. <laughs> I'll be sure to pass on your good advice, Dr Sarah. There's the vicar's letter and a parcel and a bottle of calamine lotion from the doctor. Meow. What is it, Jess? Ah, the salt. <laughs> Clever lad. Thank you very much. Morning, Reverend. How are you feeling? <coughs> Terrible, Pat. Well, these should help you. Calamine lotion and salt from the doctor. God bless her. How kind. <coughs> Can't stop, Reverend. I've got to call in and see Jeff and Charlie Pringle. They're poorly too. Oh, 
Pat, <coughs> would you give them something from me? Uh, certainly, Reverend. A gardening magazine for Jeff and a comic to cheer up little Charlie. <laughs> oh, and I have a message from Sarah Gilbertson. Don't forget to gargle. I won't, Pat. <coughs> <coughs> That's from the doctor. And the Reverend sent this. Oh. How to grow sweet peas? Ooh. Meow, meow. Whoops. <laughs> I've got it wrong. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Zap Zero, my hero. That's more like it. Jess has got a much better memory than me. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, you two. Drink lots of water, and Sarah Gilbertson says, don't forget to gargle. How you feeling, Bill? Bored. I want to play football. Oh, you won't be doing that for a few more days, love. Thanks for the calamine lotion, Pat. We really need it. I've got one more bottle to drop off at Mira's. Oh, could you give Nisha something from me, please? Of course, Dorothy. It's a hot water bottle to keep Mira warm while she's got a cold. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Jess. It's not real. Oh, by the way, Bill, Sarah Gilbertson says don't forget to gargle. That's just what the... Jess! <coughs> oh, thanks for reminding me, Jess. <coughs> I nearly forgot. Dorothy Thompson sent this to keep you warm, Mira. Thank you, Pat. You're very welcome. <sighs> <sighs> You look worn out. It's been a very busy day. <coughs> and I've got a bit of a sore throat. You should go home and gargle, Pat. That's exactly what Sarah Gilbertson says. Don't forget to gargle. <laughs> Soon be home now, Jess. <coughs> no. 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 <laughs> Sounds like they've all taken Sarah Gilbertson's good advice. <coughs> <coughs> Hi, Dad. Hi, Julian. How are you feeling? Much better. I'm glad to hear it. <sighs> oh, my goodness, Pat. You've got chicken pox. Mrs. Goggin said you've got to drink lots of her black currant cordial and rub calamine lotion onto your itchy spots. Thank you. You're a very good doctor. Come on, Julian, you mustn't be late for school. You looking forward to seeing all your friends again? Oh, yeah. Bye, Dad. See you later, love. Bye. Meow, meow. Hello, Julian. Are you all better? I'm fine, but now my dad's got chicken pox. He's really fed up. 
Poor Pat. He worked so hard taking care of us all while we were ill. He brought me a comic. And he bought me a hot water bottle. And he bought me a bottle of com... 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 lotion. He made us all feel better. But Mr Prinkle, Mr Prinkle, I know. Why don't we do something for Pat? Yeah! yeah! Oh, dear Jess. It's a bit lonely here on our own. <laughs> what on earth? In Greendale, if you're under the weather, there's someone you're glad to see. He brings help to you and me. Everybody.